بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما تعلمنا وزدنا علما يا كريم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته I was talking to Mufti Sahib and uh, one of our sisters got the timer here you know I don't need a timer Alhamdulillah yeah, I don't need a timer but jazakallah khair and you're probably going to get tired with that but inshallah may Allah reward you First and foremost alhamdulillah it's again a massive pleasure to have been invited again to speak at such a beautiful conference the mercy to mankind conference which started 4 years ago eh uh, started 4 years ago at Kobo Hall when this wasn't even in our thoughts alhamdulillah and the first speaker was myself alhamdulillah so i am starting off this fourth annual conference here in michigan alhamdulillah and we have to remind ourselves that our nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam just as mufti sahab he reminded us he's a treasure he's a treasure the more you learn about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the more you fall in love with him and there's people here from michigan people here from different parts of america to join us and to inshallah learn lessons that we can take back to our communities first and foremost we have to remind ourselves that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the quran laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana indeed in the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you have a good example to follow for him who hopes in the meeting with allah on the last day and remembers allah much just a few weeks ago we were basking in the month of ramadan and what a beautiful month it is a month which we really realize our purpose of life this month which we strive to read as much as we can of the Quran and then to practice it especially when you're praying together and there's a person next to you who's making some weird noises you know eating has eaten too much during uh, iftar and sahur so you have to be patient and we're going to learn today inshallah in this in this few moments we have together about the kindness of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with children what an example he is for us sallallahu alaihi wasallam our nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a teacher an administrator a leader a general and his example cannot be paralleled and this is why we're learning about him sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he was not a person who would just pass down commands but he was a person who would not only pass down commands but be involved in what he's told his companions to do and as you know the battle of the trench was a difficult battle and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam marked out the line of where the muslims were going to build or dig out the trench and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took part in it he was there taking part in that and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us again in the quran wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim la ilaha illallah and in you indeed you are on a great moral 
character, great moral character. And we see him in Ta'if having endured so many injuries, tired, bleeding. And he turns around and he makes a dua for them for their guidance. He didn't say to Allah, Ya Allah, destroy them. But rather, he says, Ya Allah, guide them for they don't know. Alhamdulillah, being born Muslims, we have to look within ourselves that how much do I know of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Am I reading about him daily? Am I getting to know him better every single day? Alhamdulillah, we're blessed with our Sheikh Abdullah being here. Who every single year we have the Sira intensive when we have people again coming from all over. America and people joining us from all over the world via Zoom. So please, during these two days, keep them in your du'as. That Allah gives them sincerity. And especially keep their youngest brother who passed away in a tragic car accident in your du'as, please. Okay, wherever you go, please make du'as for them. For alhamdulillah, we are blessed to have this beautiful institute. Miftah, Munir Academy of Michigan Islamic Institute. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again reminds us in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have not sent you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, except as a mercy to the worlds. And he is a mercy to the worlds. His interaction again with the children was so beautiful. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he taught us in a beautiful hadith there is no gift a parent can give his or her child that is better than good manners. Good manners. And then the Prophet ﷺ also said, whoever does not show affection to the young and respect to the old is not one of us. Again, a reminder, whoever does not show affection to the young and respect to the old is not one of us. You see one of the elderly walking around, you're sitting, tell them, please take my spot. I can sit on the ground. Look after them. When they're in the line to get food, make sure they're in the front of the line. All right, look after the elderly. Look after our seniors. Go and kiss their hands and ask for du'as. And now coming on to the topic at hand is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us blessings in abundance. And one of them blessings and a treasure is your children. Such a massive blessing children are. You had a long day at work, you come back and you see your child and no matter how old they get and no matter how old you get, they're walking through that door, they're going to put a smile on your face. It doesn't matter how old they get, it doesn't matter if they become grandparents, they will put a smile on your face, especially when they're young. You've had a long day. Kids are all ill at MII, you walk in and you see your son running up to you and he says, give me a hug. It just takes away all that tiredness. And you are a reflection of your parents. So the parents themselves are role models. And our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I don't have much time, I want to go into some stories of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his kindness. And like I said, they are a treasure. The children are a treasure. We talk about legacies, living behind legacies. And I'll tell you one thing, legacy. Legacies are legacies, but my, my students are my legacy. They're the biggest gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, I've been an educator since 2010. 
I've played soccer with them. I've left soccer. I've made a few devious uh, decisions, especially when it comes to IAGD against Unity Center. But this is how it goes. Eh? This is how it goes. Alhamdulillah. I was thinking of coming out of retirement, playing for IAGD, but they won't allow me. Unity Center wants me to play for them. But anyways, that's the rivalry. Alhamdulillah, I love them all, alhamdulillah, so much. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, first and foremost, his love for his grandchildren, especially Hassan, and especially Hussein as well. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as narrated by Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, there's a couple of different narrations, but he was in the market. He was in the market with Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He went to his daughter's house, Sayyida Fatima radiallahu anha, and said, where's the small chap, where's the small child, meaning where's Hassan? And then Hassan comes out, and he's elated to see his grandfather. He comes running towards the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just picture this scene. He, runs, he comes running towards the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, puts his hands into the hands of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they smile at each other. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam embraces Hassan. He doesn't just embrace Hassan, he makes a dua for Hassan. He says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I love him, so please love him. And love those who love him. Look at that beautiful du'a. When was the last time we made du'a like that for our kids, for our children? Ya Allah, I love. I love my daughter. I love my son. I love my granddaughter. I love my grandson. Ya Allah, love them. If we do not make du'a, by mentioning the names of our children after each prayer, then this is one of the lessons that we're going to learn today. By name, you're going to mention every single child. And the children that are here, after you finish your daily prayers, you're going to make a dua for your parents. Ya Allah, bless my Baba, bless my Mama, bless my Obuji, bless my Amiji. Ya Allah, they've done so much for us. Ya Allah, give them good health. Ya Allah, keep them over my head for as long, as long as you can, Ya Allah. And make me an obedient child. Write these things down and make sure, inshallah, that we enact them. And now, unfortunately, due to all the cell phones and everything, our hearts have become hard. We come back from, from school, we come back from work, we throw our backpacks towards the, towards the side, we go downstairs in the basement, we don't even say salams to our parents. Show kindness to them. And one second story I want to share is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's love for Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes into Medina, he comes into Medina. Everybody's giving him gifts. There's one companion by the name of Umm Sulaim. She comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasul, I've got no one, but I've got my child, take him, and he's going to serve you. And Sayyidina Anas radiallahu anhu says, I served the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for 10 years. Never did he say off to me. Never did he say to me, if I did something, why did you do that? Or if I did not do something that he had commanded me to do, why did you not do it? One quick story, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes in and he says, says to Sayyidina Anas, radiallahu anhu, says, Ya Anas, could you do this for me? Anas being a small teenager, maybe a bit younger than that, he says, no. What's the reply of the Messenger of Allah? What would be our reply? I know myself being a principal, a system principal. I know myself. When I get angry, they know I'm angry. They know. Uh, if they say no, I said, excuse me. What did you say? You want to come to the side and let's talk? As a ref, I do that. Uh, people try to be mean to me. I says, you want to talk? Let's talk to the side then. <laughs> but anyways, 
the reply of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a smile and he walks away. Allahu Akbar. He comes back after a few moments, maybe half an hour, an hour, he comes back. He says, Ya Anas, did you do what I told you to do? Sayyidina Anas smiles and he runs as fast as he can to do what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him to do. He did not fight fire with fire, did he? He took his time, came back. Oh, that's beauty. And lastly, inshallah, I've got a couple of minutes. Lastly, I just want to leave you some steps of how to increase our kindness. Okay? A bit more time, I would have mentioned a bit more, but one is smile at each other. Okay? Mashallah, we've got so many people here, smile at each other. People that you don't know, go and greet them. So smile is one of them. Second is greet. Greet them. I was in the streets of Damascus, so called Jum'ah, walking along. It was like 7, 8 o'clock at night. And I see somebody sitting to the side, open window market, all tired, exhausted. I've never seen him. He's never seen me. He looked up and I smiled. And I said, Assalamu alaikum. I did not say my name is Ishtiyak. I didn't say anything like that. I just smiled and I said, Assalamu alaikum. I walked past him. He smiled and he said, Wa alaikum assalam. I must have walked maybe 10 yards. I looked back. He's still looking at me and he's still smiling at me. The second is Hadith Musalsal Bil Awaliya. This is the first Hadith a Hadith master teaches his Hadith student. And that hadith is Ar-Rahimuna Yarhamuhum Ar-Rahman Irhamu man fil ard Yarhamkum man fil sama This is the first hadith you learn from your hadith master Ar-Rahimuna Yarhamuhum Ar-Rahman All the ones who show mercy May the most merciful one show mercy to you Irhamu man fil ard Show mercy to the to the creation on the earth and the creation in the heavens will show mercy to you. Simple hadith. This is how three steps, smile, greet, and show mercy. You see somebody struggling, you haven't seen them before. You go up to them, can I help you? I'm from Michigan, I'm from Miftah, I'm a student here. Where do you want to go? I see you, see you looking around, you don't know where to go. Let me help you. So the three steps, and remind yourselves of that. And before that, the dua. Mention your kids' names in them. Mention your parents' names in them. Every, after every single prayer. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to show kindness. To show love to each other. To build miftah, inshaAllah. Like it is building. So make dua for us all. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.